about a skirt for the guard, for Ky Kyla? You don't like the pants? I just, I, I think that she would look really good in like a lady power suit, like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> a little bit about this dress, it's for the character Selamine. It's for the last, her very last appearance. Uh, she's supposed to be coming from the opera, maybe, or some fancy place where she should be wearing a ball gown. It is modeled after a 1930s kind of a ball gown and modified to be backless and a little more risque than they would be in the 1930s. Oh, that's better. Much better. When I cut this fabric for the pattern, I, um, I underestimated how much I would need, so I had to cut this piece on the bias, which means it's completely diagonal on the fabric. And so that changes the grain. This also has a little bit of stretch in it, so basically how it turned out when I stitched to hem this, it kind of does this little blah, 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 blah thing <laughs> that I'm gonna try to remedy by just taking out the stitches with, with a seam ripper and hopefully it'll it'll relax and I can just slowly hand stitch it because when you use a sewing machine sometimes it's got all this tension on it, it runs it through really fast and it just kind of goes, you know, it just cinches it up in places that you don't want that. It's been crazy just like walking in here and they they saying, "Hey, you want a costume design?" So it's it's been it's been a really really good experience for me because I'm right out of high school and I was designing in high school, but it was never as professional as this. So as a costume designer, we first we start out with first reading the script, um, and we then meet with the director, um, and he gives us a rundown on each character, what they're like. It really helps to know who's cast as the, the character, because you can go off of their body type, off of how they normally dress, what they can pull off. And then we are expected to do renderings of all the costumes that we want to make. It's nice to have swatches to go with them, although we don't always have access to the swatches. Little pieces of fabric that we staple to the renderings. And we have to get them approved by Patrick, and then we are set free to make and pull. Whenever possible, we want to pull costumes because it's we have so much stock here that there would be no point in buying new stuff when we already have it. talking about um, deep reds, kind of dusty, rosy mm -hmm. pinks. Mm -hmm. Very, very um, frilly and sparkly. Creams and blacks and sequins and sparkles. That's great. Those are strong, which is great. And they're, they're not terribly ambiguous, which I like too, which fits mm -hmm. her. Um, something that just occurred to me a little while ago is that Arsinoe is also wearing red mm -hmm. and a red leather, but we could also, we could put her in something that's like bright. I like think that's a good way to go. This kind of red. And yeah. her, her Salamine's red would be deeper, right. yeah, darker with more accents and more of a color palette. Mm -hmm. As long as you know that inherently the eye will go to Arsinoe in her brighter color. Yes. And because we only see her brighter color when she's solo, we're good. With, great. With Alceste, and we we're very clear that she's a making a statement great. about what This will be she's the doing. shortest life of a costume that you've worked so hard on. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> I, I imagine it'll have its impact. It'll be yeah, it's it'll be a great impact. Yeah, I've been really impressed with the staff here, um, for the most part, has been incredibly supportive. They consider themselves and make it very clear that they're resources for us to draw on. They have great equipment, great information. I mean, just all the people that have come together to create this have been so supportive, and I think that they they model that sort of professionalism, and they, they, they have that standard. I'm going to go schmancy in four. Better. Fine with me. Wherever you wanted to put it, I, I just want to make sure we're matching the text. Yes. Okay, so she, he survived the arrest, not the court case. Fine. So he can still be dressed. We can change him a little in three because mm -hmm. he goes off stage for a while. So it's a good opportunity for a change. Mm -hmm. He has time. It's not fast in three. So he's, he's not wearing the suit in scene three. In I wouldn't. Three. No, I think you. if you had it placed in four, it's good. Okay. Here's what really helps with that is that four to five, there's almost no time, and mm -hmm. he's saying he's leaving for good. So the question is, how do we want him dressed when he's leaving for good? Well, from four to five, he doesn't change at all, then he's wearing a suit the entire time. Mm -hmm. He could take his could take jacket something off. off. Absolutely. Yeah. He absolutely could. There's not, no, there's not a worry with that. He could take it off during the scene and then have it back. The question is, if he's leaving, what does he look like? Let me fall. No, no, I was pushed. And we both know by him.
You know the term soft eyes? Soft eyes means you watch like you, you're completely new to it. You're, you're fresh. You're, you're an audience member. You're walking in. You're going. It's, you don't think about all the work you put into it, all that stuff. You go, what am I seeing? And what's standing out? What's, what's working? You know what I mean? What's like, why are they wearing that? And you know, you write down like, why are they? Hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what soft eyes are. And that's ultimately why we do, a, a, we do it on Monday so that by Friday when the whole thing's up, you've given yourself some time to adjust if you need to. Everything becomes at that point part of a larger dialogue because every change you make affects everybody. Thank you.